Hey everyone, on this episode of EdTech, I'll be or joined by Ernie Bailey and Rob Raspberry as we talk about active or assisted le learning classrooms. Up next on EdTech. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Utology. This is EdTech, episode 54, Assisted or Active Learning. This is EdTech. This is EdTech. I'm Bill O'Donnell, your host, and this is EdTech, the monthly higher ed uh, tech, higher ed tech AV podcast. Uh, this time, I'm joined by Ernie Bailey. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Ernie. And as well, uh, Mr. Rob Raspberry. How are you, sir? Doing great. Good. So, um, yeah, so it's summer. Uh, all of us are probably in the midst of uh, while the students are away, uh, we're either in recovery mode or uh, install mode or both. Um, so, you know, things have, as I say, as I put it, life happens. There's uh, There's been some fun uh, construction projects going on and everything. Um, and the, f the uh, but yeah, you know, we'll get into that later. Um, the first article that we have is um, is from uh, Commercial Integrator uh, magazine, and it's in regards to Curry College uh, using assisted technology to make a uh, assisted assisted technology classroom. And you know, if you read more into the article, it does kind of seem more like um, active learning classrooms. Which, if you're not familiar with what they are. Um, they're meant to be more tech enabled where students can bring their own devices, uh, you know, your BYOB or BYOD. Um, and that, you know, you can go and say, oh, hey, I have something on my laptop or I have something on my tablet, something on my phone. Um, you know, here, I want to share the stuff, but I don't always have all the cables, connectors and that kind of things. So. It is kind of interesting to see how, how um, like Curry College and a couple other colleges are starting to really move towards um, making uh, classrooms more uh, BY BYOD friendly. Um, Ernie, have you guys uh, started going down some of this pass or what's, uh, you know, what's, what do you think? We have, we've actually built our second generation uh, room similar to this. Uh, first one we called an active learning center. It's still very, in, in very high demand. We built it. 2012 uh, it's getting close to being ready for some upgrades uh, probably next year uh, but last year we've now had one full school year uh, with a what we term a flexible learning center mm -hmm. and that you know we took what we did in the active learning center then met with the instructors and the students that were using it and tried to you know come up with some enhancements if you will mm -hmm. Uh, as opposed, you know, the first one had fixed tables. You know, we had to have power in the table. We had to have networking in the table. Uh, so we basically locked the tables down to the floor, you know. Uh, they wanted to be able to rearrange furniture and stuff in this new room. Mm -hmm. And we also had some additional needs for space, flat space that could be rearranged. So we managed to incorporate all that into one place. Uh, we put uh, you know, large displays all the way around the room. Uh, half of them are interactive monitors. So the instructor can go up and actually write on the- Oh, like, uh, like uh, do, they can do annotations and you know. Exactly. Yeah, Timmy, uh, you made some good points here with the PowerPoint, but let me, you know, your, uh, your grammar is horrible, so let me correct this kind of thing. Exactly. Um, but we designed it in a way where like I said, we have six monitors, three on the north wall, three on the south wall. Mm -hmm. We can divide the room electronically into three sections. There's no partition, mm -hmm. but there's enough spacing where, and uh, the interactive TVs are on the ends on the south wall and in the middle on the north wall, mm -hmm. and they pair up. With the with the one opposite behind, you know, opposite it, mm -hmm. uh, so you can have two large monitors for each of the three groups that you have. Oh, that's nice. Now, uh, now I actually do. I do have a question for you because this okay. is just something in terms of you know how this goes 
pedagogy wise, which, you know, from a tech perspective is not always the biggest thing, but um, I know from at least at least from our college or our university uh, that there is a different teaching method to using these classrooms. And do you guys have, you know, do you have it where like you have the faculty learn before they go in the room or is it really more of a, hey, this is day one. Hey, we'll we'll teach you how to how to work this or, you know, it's we, go ahead. We did whole training sessions for the instructors mm -hmm. on how to use the different technology. And once again, we met with them. They helped develop the scope for the room. Okay. We, we do all the work internally. You know, mm -hmm. we do the engineering, the design, the programming, the installation. So we can fine tune it as we go mm -hmm. uh, without having to pay someone to come back in and rewrite code or make oh, yeah. a minor change. We, we can do that ourselves, uh, which gives us a lot of flexibility in these situations. And you know, a circuit comes and says, I really wish I could do this. Mm -hmm. Well, we say, can you wait six weeks? <laughs> and we can make it happen. You know, as opposed to, we can get that in the schedule for two years down the road. You know, mm -hmm. you know, if there's a break coming up, we can get it done over the long weekend or whatever. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like the flex space, I like the idea of like the flex space. I like the idea of active learning. Um, and we've tried to be very proactive on, on campus about that because um, once or twice, you know, I've, as I'll put it, we've had like digital survivors because the registrar just kind of looked at what the room, uh, what the room capacity was and went, okay, here you go and shoved them in there. And we had, you know, one or two history classes. We had uh, an English class uh, and we had like two business, uh, um, uh, it, we actually had two MBA classes uh, get put in there. Um, the history folks kind of, it was, you know, the equivalent of, uh, you know, if you rent a car and, uh, you're used to driving automatic and they gave you a stick, will you learn? Oh yeah. Will you go for it again? Oh no. So it's, it's one of those things It's just being kind of a, a proactive approach. And I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you in the fact of, you know, you, you reach out for feedback and, and, you know, what's, you know, what can we do to improve it? What do you, you know, what, what would you like? Well, we also work with our scheduling office and the registrar's office in that you have to have a specific need to get in the active learning center or the uh, flexible learning center. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you demonstrate what you're going to be doing in there. You talk to us about it. We generally have a meeting. You know, the scheduling office has associate deans from each of the colleges come in and they negotiate. <laughs> You know, <laughs> we need it on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 10. Mm -hmm. We need it on Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 3 and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they, they work it out. And uh, so, it you know, we do share the space among all the colleges. Uh, and we are an academic health science center only. So, you know, we have medicine, pharmacy, uh, health professions, nursing. Chemistry. Uh, public health. Yeah. Well, no, no, we don't. Oh, well, well I mean, like biochemistry. Yeah, we have, yeah, we do have biochemistry, but that is really part of our graduate school. So, you know, they, oh, okay. they come in, it's not a separate school. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have uh, six or five colleges at the graduate school on our campus. Uh, okay. And uh, like I said, we all sit down and work together. We're a fairly small, you know, campus as far as, you know, higher ed goes. We're, you know, we, we've got about, between 2,500 and 3,000 students. Well, it's still uh, though. It's, 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 it's a good size. Yeah, but at the same, at the same time, you know, uh, a classroom, you know, some folks go, well, I just need this space because of this much. Well, no, it's, it's you know, uh, this is one of those things where it turns into the, the, what the need is versus the registrar. And it also depends on the colleges. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll come to Rob to this in a, in a second. Um, you know, it, it depends on, what kind of relationship you have with, uh, with, you know, with your, with your other departments and other organizations on campus. The fact that, you know, you have a good relationship with the registrar really does make life a lot easier. Um, we, we try to have a good relationship with the registrar. And in our case, it's, we literally tell them, listen, this is the list of folks that have, uh, that have taken um, our active learning boot camp, and it's a two or three day course. And, you know, we, you know, we get the folks into the pedagogy of it, how the room functions. Yeah. We have one of our folks who, we have one of our folks to tell them, you know, how the touch panel works, how the table layout works and everything else. And so it's to kind of get everyone accommodated. 
Um, but like I said, every now and then there's a, there is turnover and all of a sudden, you know, like just recently where our head of registrar retired. So there was a new registrar and there was a new, um, uh, folks who were doing the filing and everything else. So, you know, like as I put it, life happens and then, you know, you, you re, you re, you readjust. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there are some, there are some of those fun things. Rob, do you have, uh, anything in this similar vein at, uh, Drexel? Yeah, so it's uh, sort of interesting that we're on this subject. Um, <laughs> the, when I read the article, at first when I saw it, I thought they were going to talk about accessibility and, and be doing special accommodations. And then, like you said, it went more into the active mm -hmm. uh, learning space. So I'm sort of in between, well, what is an assistive, what is an assistive learning space, what is an active learning space? But in any, in any case, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a shaky cam here because I happen to be in one of our collaboration classrooms. I didn't even know this was going to happen. <laughs> Bear with me. Happy, with happy accident. I'm going to zoom this out. Um, uh, the, my camera work is awful. I apologize. So this is, I guess, our most current collaboration space. Uh, what we have in here are you basically have pods mm -hmm. and at each pod you basically have a display that the instructor can either take a student's um, work either from a laptop or basically we have these flip it um, tables that have all in one so you just flip it up and you can just put your display on your work group and then the instructor can not only take the student's work and put it on the rest of the pods in the room but also on the displays here. And these are smart displays, so they're interactive displays. So this is sort of along those, the, the active uh, learning uh, setup. And what's nice is, you know, you can do a standard lecture, you can do work group lectures, you can do the pedagogy where you have the work, the lecture material already done, the students come in and, you know, work in their groups or just do the traditional setup. So this is, you know, uh, sort of an iteration of what's going on, what we're, Looking to do, obviously, is to get the content share mm -hmm. part of it, the solstice, those types of technologies more in there, mm -hmm. you know, in these classrooms uh, as we, you know, move further on and upgrade. So, uh, and these spaces are, you know, any uh, college or organization can basically um, reserve these out, but, you know, it's almost a first come, first serve. Mm -hmm. But this is only in the Corman Center, and there are lots of other classrooms uh, and spaces on campus that we're looking to upgrade. And it, it's funny when you mention the uh, summer projects, uh, <laughs> a, a reorg. So I've acquired a bunch of classroom spaces that I'm making assessments on. So, um, you know. Uh, as I say, ah, uh, the assessment and does this mean, as I say, the, the, the ever fun one, and uh, Ernie, you probably know this as well as I do, it turns into, okay, what is the actual standard classroom or at least meet uh, uh, class, you know, minimal classroom standards kind of thing. Right. Because um, every now and then we have had uh, classrooms where folks go, oh, well, we kind of hobbled this all together and does this work? And, you know. We have, you know, we have like a staff of three amongst the a classroom size of 250, and we kind of look and we're like, "No, you hobbled that together. That's um, that's on you." Um, you know, if you, you, but at the same time, when it comes to our standards, um, we've also made it to where all the rooms are at least standardized out to where uh, we do have student workers who can go out. And for the most part, you know, if there's an issue, they can kind of like look at the touch panel and the touch panel will actually tell them what, you know, if there's a disconnect at the projector, if there's a disconnect from the PC or, you know, if there's some basic issue, it's usually, you know, uh, uh, they, can fi they can fix it uh, e quite easily either in the room or they can actually do it uh, remotely. But once again, it's, it's the wonderful world of classroom standards and um, that's kind of like steering the Titanic. Well, we came up with a way to do the standards here on our campus mm -hmm. in that uh, it, a department who wants us to support their room, mm -hmm. they get it up to our standard one time. And then it, go, it falls into our budget rotation mm -hmm. to keep it at our current level. Okay. Now, one of the rules is it has to be available campus-wide. Mm. Okay. They turn it. They turn the scheduling of it over to 
Well, it's basically out of the registrar's office now. Anybody can do it. Now, they still have the right to schedule their own events in there. And, you know, priority scheduling is for their, their events. Mm -hmm. Once they set their calendar, it's then open for other people to use it. Mm -hmm. They can't kick people out that have scheduled it. Yeah, it's it's the um, the way the, and we have a similar we have a similar um, uh, uh, standard in that if folks want us to come up with something, I'll happily you know we'll happily come up with you know oh we want like a conference we want a conference room set up and this and that okay I'll you know I'll come up with a parts list and this is what the install uh, labor is because you know us being in Jersey everything has to be union so you know you use the in-house uh, carpenters and in-house electricians or anything I go this is going to be the final cost for this. And it usually comes into about five to $6,000 or so. Mm -hmm. um, and we say, okay, if you do this, we can service it. We can support it. Um, if anything breaks, we'll take care of it. Um, but this is the upfront cost. Now, if you want us to pay for it, then, you know, Ernie, it's, you said it, you know, you hit the nail on the head. It's essentially schedulable public space. If it's, right. oh no, it's just for us. Well, that's private space. So that therefore that turns into, you have to use your own department funds for that. Like that's, right. it, it, yeah, it's, it's the, it's a, it's a variant of private and public, um, uh, private and public space. Kind we of. had a chance where he, he's retiring Monday, mm -hmm. uh, but he came about eight years ago and I was in a meeting with him and several people about a, an unused space we were trying to turn into a multi-purpose area. Mm -hmm. And uh, the head of facilities was in the meeting and he said, we're not really sure who owns the room, whether it's psychiatry or the hospital. And the chancellor said, I own the room. <laughs> He's, and at that point, there was there is no more private space on campus. Okay, it is all basically considered property of the chancellor. Mm -hmm. and he says that, you know, you're going to use it, you know, Yes, you know, you can use your funds to take care of it and do what you want to with it, but you can't keep other people from using it. Mm. Um, and, you know, along those lines, you know, he told the registrar how to set up the scheduling and said the rooms will be available on the master schedule. Mm -hmm. We can, we will add whoever is in charge of scheduling that space for the department into scheduling rights for the master scheduling program. And they're they're locked into their spaces as being a, being approvers for it, mm -hmm. but you know they they can do that so they can schedule their own space, but other people can schedule it as well. Um, we had people wanting to build new buildings or take some existing space and make a large conference room because every Monday they have an hour long meeting. <laughs> And, you know, when you get the, the group across the hall has a meeting every Tuesday morning and they have their own room. So, you know, he said, you know, I, I need to have much space. more efficient here. Oh, yeah. No, I need to have my space. Well, why? Well, because we have our, our group meetings, you know, once a week. Every week, yeah. Oh yeah. Now, so, so this is a good one. Um, so we're, we're going through a renovation right now and we built out, um, we actually cleared out the top floor of one of our buildings just for uh, philosophy and our English department. Now our philosophy department is probably like maybe about 10, like 10, 10 faculty or so plus, you know, including the chair and the admin and everything. Okay, fine. Um, our English department is, you know, 20 to 30 people or so. And you just, it takes up almost the, like the, the entire half of the building or the, the half of the floor. And, uh, you know, we were kind of looking through everything and they said, oh yeah, over here is going to be, um, a large group study room that can hold uh, 12 to 15 people. Uh, then we're going to have some small group study rooms, uh, down the hallway here. And, um, you know, we're now in the phase where they're starting to move all, you know, we have the, 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 the TCO so they can start, you know, the temporary certificate of occupancy. So, you know, the faculty are starting to move their stuff in and, you know, get, all gets, get resettled. And, um, I was going through the hallway, kind of just checking off some punch list item stuff. And the chair of the English department kind of looked and said, Oh, so this is going to be our new conference room. Right. And I said, no, that's a large group study room. They're like, well, yeah, but it's next to our space, so that that should be part of ours. And I'm going, 
no, no, no. This is in the hallway. This, it, 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 I was like, you're not pulling a land grab before we even before the doors before the door locks have even put on, right? And they're like, yeah, no, this is going to be our, our conference room space. And I'm like, I, you know what? Take it up with capital plans. I'm not even <laughs> not even going to deal and I'm going to deal with this. So, um, you know, it's the wonderful world of no, no, this is this is our space. I'm going, there's no lock on the door. You can't like, you know, I'm, I'm waiting now for them to just kind of come up with the, you know, the rather stereotypical here. We're going to, uh, uh, you know, slap up the sheet of paper with the uh, hand type note of, you know, English department conference room or something like that. We started new policy several years ago with all of this stuff. And if a group moves out of a space or, you know, they've lost people and an office is vacant, planning comes through and changes the lock on the door. Yep. And only planning has a key. Planning and security, but they always have keys to that door until it's determined what its purpose is going to be. Yeah, we um, as of late, the other uh, the other fun thing that we've been doing is uh, getting away from uh, your regular uh, tumbler locks, uh, with the exception of uh, not not having them on the faculty uh, um, offices, but. You know their department, the department door. Yes, that has an like that has a uh, PoE lock. The uh, all the classrooms PoE locks, and um, you know I kind of made the joke one day of how, uh, hey guys, how do we know if someone actually got let go? Oh, well, you know we just turn off their stuff and we'll just figure the system just work itself out. And I'm going, no, no one told them that this person was uh, that this person got hired back. No, 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 we just we just fixed the bug in the system. Okay, good to good to know. You know, it's the that's the wonderful world of like, hey guys, my my, my key doesn't work. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah. Nice way, nice way of telling somebody. Yeah, there you yeah go. well, you know, that's the that's the that's the wonderful. As I say, that's the wonderful world of uh, IT efficiency. Oh, you, no one told you? Oh, well, we told you now. I'm like, <laughs> it's like thanks, guys. That's that's oh. where I that's where I end up playing the and you know in in a lot of cases we all end up playing the kind of dancers with wolves character every now and then in which it's like oh no no well the it folks did this okay well how do we explain that to the faculty oh well, th that's your job now and i'm like uh, thanks <laughs> but it's fine it's it's one of those things where you end up playing the balance on these things um in terms of going back to that article and everything um it is kind of a, a little bit of word trickery because rob you're right i originally was reading and going oh assisted like oh like an assisted listening um type classroom yeah, exactly. or like uh an ada compliant classroom I'm like oh all right this is kind of interesting to see through and you start reading it and you're like no, this is, they just came up with more creative words for active learning, not bashing, yeah. not bashing Curry College. I am all in favor of, you know, making things more accessible for students because let's face it, they are the digital natives. They kind of grew up with all this stuff. And for them, it's, you know, very, real common to interface with a touch panel because, you know, they've, they've grown up with this. So, you know, it's, it's normal for them to do that. Um, but, you know, when you suddenly hear like assisted, uh, assisted classrooms, um, yeah. Traditionally, I'll think, okay, they, so they either have uh, something from William Sound or Listen Technologies, or you know something where it's like, okay, that's ADA. It's it's the they're we're advancing the ADA compliance. But I can tell you, you know, at least for us, we try to make sure that we're ADA compliant. Our desks are all height compliant. Uh, everything's within. Uh, okay, in as I say, once again, these are broad terms you can paint a barn with, um, but we make sure everything's within a reachable space, which is which is in our case on the desks, everything's less than less than 24 inches from the edge of the edge of the table. Let me let me throw a ADA story in here real quick. Mm -hmm. um, we're renovating a uh, lecture hall that was first built in 1994. Mm -hmm. well, do you know what happened in 1994? Wasn't that when the ADA, uh, the ADA yes. bill was signed in? Yes. We were working with architects and contractors during ADA, and everybody was scared to death. Okay. This floor had two lecture halls in it. Uh, you know, the stages were back to back. Uh -huh. uh, I was told that I had to be able, in case I ever had, a wheelchair bound technician. I had to be able to get them into one of the two booths so they could have a job, not into both of them. So we had to put a wheelchair lift from the main level to get up into the control room. Mm. Well, it's never, it was, you know, tested when they first put it in and never been used since. Well, we're renovating the room and we needed to 
to roll a rack into the lecture, into the control room. We said, Ooh. great, we can use the lift. Well, we went in, it didn't work. <laughs> so we, we called facilities management and they told us we didn't have a lift in that building. Oh. They said, you're in, you don't know what building you're in. I said, yes, I do. I was here when the building was built. They said, well, there's not a lift in there. They came over, their elevator coordinator came over and he said, you do have a lift in here. And they got to checking and it was never put in the plans. Wow. It was never documented. <laughs> it was never certified by the state. Oh, even better. So he got to go down to the state certification office and said, uh, we've got a little issue. We have a wheelchair lift that was installed in 1994. It's never been certified. He said, they've just <laughs> fell over laughing. They said, you know, uh, this guy is one of the most organized guys we have on campus. And he works with these elevator people all the time. So they trust him. <laughs> and he said, it's good that he's built that trust. They came out that afternoon, checked it, you know, after it had, you know, it had been repaired. Mm and uh, slapped their seal on it and approval. But they told me I can't use it for my equipment anymore. Oh, boo. Or can I use it as a storage closet? Oh, boo. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll at least give you one. This is, um, this is our, our way of uh, um, meeting ADA compliance. So um, between, we have two buildings and then there was a connector. Now the connector was kind of built as an afterthought. So in the original connector you actually had to you the between the two buildings they were actually un they were uh, uneven so you, you actually had to take a ramp to go up then you were in the connector you would go across and then you would take either a ramp or a set of stairs to go back down to the other building and um we've now actually made the connector to where it's leveled out with the rest of the with, with between the both buildings um except on the ground floor and uh their their idea was well, how are we going to make this uh, all ADA compliant? And uh, our capital plans and our GC said, "Oh, we'll just make a, we'll just uh, have a uh, half stop in the elevator." Oh, okay. That just, you know, it's like okay, that doesn't sound too bad. There's literally a front entrance and a rear entrance uh, to the elevator. Okay, nothing. You know, that's nothing mind bending. Okay, fine. So they go to install the elevator, and you know, they get the TCO. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. And I see the, um, and I see our, our. Uh, integrators loading in the desks and they said hey so do we go to the fourth floor and I went what fourth floor there's only there's only three floors he's like yeah no the uh, elevator says uh, one two three four and uh, yeah it turns out that half step we're talking like maybe half a flight of stairs um, as far as the elevator guys are concerned oh no that's the second floor I'm going not one and a half <laughs> yeah no, no I, I wish I was like could you it was like what you guys couldn't have made a 1a or 1b and it's like Oh, no, no, no. Oh, they're like, oh, you want to change that? Oh, that's going to be a change order. And just our capital plans were like, no, 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 we'll figure it out later. I'm going, oh, I'm, uh, I'm like, I, I can see this already. The, you know, that's going to be the number one complaint. Oh, I'm supposed to go to the fourth floor and this and that. And it's like, I, I swear we're going to have student workers just like telling folks, like, you know, we're going to like have to tape in a sign that says, yeah, just subtract one. <laughs> it's one of those ones you just look and you're like, you know, like I said, I, I looked at it all and, and, Ernie and Rob, you both have probably had your own uh, GC nightmares where just I'm at the point, at least with the uh, with the renovations where I look at things and I go, I'm not even mad anymore. I just, uh, you know, I have an email chain that says, do this. You didn't do this. So go, you know what? This is on, this is coming out of someone's budget, but it's not mine. Yeah. You know, it, and that's, that's what you can do sometimes. So Yeah. Uh, that aside, uh, Ernie, is there, uh, any fun, as I say, any fun, uh, installs you have going on this, uh, this summer? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, we are upgrading a couple of classrooms. Uh, like I said, we do everything internally, so we, oh, yeah. we don't do a whole lot at a time, but, mm -hmm. uh, we're going through and just, you know, we're in the process of leaving lamp projectors behind as much as possible. Mm, fair enough. Users. Yep. Uh, uh, they pay. They pay for themselves in what eighteen months? Worst case. Yeah. And uh, as I say, all right. So Rob, um, you're just like kind of going through your your new uh, your new your new uh, uh, territory of land and going. Yes. This is okay. This is good. This is bad. Why do we have a DVD VCR combo deck in here still? 
<laughs> is Blu-ray going to stay? Is it going to go? So uh, yeah, so basically uh, we have a new CIO who's been here a little over a year and at, at Reorg happened and so uh, we have a group called Instructional Media Services that manages classrooms and it got put under my umbrella right now. And so I'm currently just making assessments and some of the classrooms are very good change them, but we're not. So just doing a top down view of it. Um, <laughs> one of the big things that we've been doing is getting away from projectors, going to laser, mm -hmm. uh, going to displays, that kind of uh, initiative is pretty big on our side. We're taking a look at one of our, our uh, primary auditoriums and looking to completely redo it uh, with, you know, an Extron uh, control system. Currently it's using, uh, an older Crestron system, and there's nothing wrong with Crestron, but we just have had good success with Extron. Everyone, let's put it this way: everyone has their comforts and their standards, yeah. yes. and I will. I, I am the biggest firm believer in this one. Um, listen, every manufacturer has some things that they do that are bulletproof and it's great. And yeah. every now and then there are some products and you look and you go, put that, like, I, I know it's fresh out the oven, put it back in the oven. Like, yeah. you, know, you got to work it through. Well, and It's the old Ford Chevy or Coke Pepsi argument. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all nobody's good. ever going to win. No, no, everyone's got their preference. So, um, yeah, that's about all the time we have for this month. Uh, Ernie, where can folks find you at? Uh, you find me on LinkedIn most of the time. Okay. And uh, Mr. Raspberry, where can folks uh, find you at? I'm um, on LinkedIn. Uh, okay. Last name's very uh, recognizable. Last name's Raspberry. Uh, also, you can go on uh, drexel.edu forward slash IT uh, under our services catalog. And uh, my group's in there under video collaboration and production in IMS. Um, so, you know, the easiest way to look me up is by the last name. Fair so, enough. It is without the P, it is not Raspberry Pi. <laughs> You're not the computer guy, huh? <laughs> oh, oh boy. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm Bill O'Donnell. You can find me on, uh, on Twitter as well as uh, um, on LinkedIn. And that is it. I will see you guys next month. <laughs>